Hey, what's going on? Applause Bootcamp. This is Mike Snee coming to you live. I'm a day behind. I apologize. Um, yesterday was an actual holiday. It was Labor Day. And I was planning on getting back and actually shooting my video. But uh, what happened, I was out visiting my, uh, my uh, in-laws. And then I decided we were going to go visit my mom and my sisters. So we went out visiting family and friends. And, uh, and we were having such a good time. I didn't want to be rushed coming back, and and and, and I, I wanted to spend that time with my family and friends. So, so that's what I did, and uh, we actually really enjoyed it. Uh, we had a great time. Um, so I'm coming to you all live tonight. Um, if you didn't know, uh, we got a hands-on live event coming up in November. It's going to be uh, November the 18th. That's a three-day event. Uh, you will start seeing a lot more um videos coming out uh this week about that um uh, so be on the lookout for that uh also um the ice cream parlor is complete and if you start checking that uh videos will start getting uploaded uh tomorrow for that and uh i should have all the videos that uh, for the ice cream parlor uploaded up uh before the end of the weekend before the weekend so all the videos are complete i'm just gonna be open uh, uploading them up into teachable so you'll be able to see the trailer um, you'll be able to see the actual ice cream stand, um, and you'll be able to see, uh, the amount of money and things you can do, uh, with the ice cream parlor. So it was about 95%, uh, completed. Um, uh, but now I just finished that last 5%. Um, I need to go through and do mobile ice cream and, um, and going out to, uh, going out to events. Um, I've been able to do that for the last several months and I have a good understanding how that is. And you will start to see you will see that coming out uh, this uh, this week. So this week you'll see that in two weeks you'll see the book. Uh, the book will be released in two weeks. Uh, so I'm I'm finishing up uploading those things I needed to upload back for Amazon. Um, I, I'm not having pre-release on it because I don't want to get them smack my hand again. Uh, but in two weeks the book will be be available. And uh, and uh, and also. Uh, if you want to go sign up for the actual Applause Bootcamp hands-on live event, if you're a, if you actually going to be coming, the link is live. You can go sign up for that. Um, I look forward to seeing you all here. It's going to be good. Um, um, I, uh, also, with Applause Bootcamp, uh, you'll see some of the videos coming up. Uh, we're adding the, the, the new uh, new uh, the, the new appliances in there. You'll see the ice machine, standalone ice machine. We have a, uh, we're going to have an actual module in there for that uh you also uh i think that's the last one we needed the standalone ice machine um was the uh, last one so we got a standalone ice machine matter of fact we got two uh three of them in here right now uh two of them are fixing for customers and uh and one of them we have here in the class so you have those in here and uh so you'll see that in there uh we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into the actual business portion of it uh so you'll start to see you're gonna see a new module coming out of there uh, where we actually going to separate the five banking accounts and the actual charge and how you need to charge. So they go a little bit deeper into that uh, because a lot of people still have uh, questions about it. I want to make sure it's very clear uh, because that's kind of what leads into tonight, our conversation tonight. Uh, the conversation tonight is uh, own nothing but control everything. Uh, you might can see I erased the names, but... Uh, you might see in the back board, like I say, I, I determine what I'm going to talk about. It's what I'm currently doing the moment before I come on here. Uh, the moment before I come on here, I have one of my, um, one of my, uh, one of, one of my ex, uh, subs, uh, that actually used to work with me. Uh, he actually, uh, was here today. Um, you, you all remember, uh, I had told you all, uh, I had a young guy. Uh, they came in. He he now was making over three thousand dollars a week. Uh, had bought a new Land Rover. Had bought a new boat. Uh, had, had, had bought a Mustang 5.0 convertible. Uh, he he traded the Mustang. Now he has uh, one of these new Jeep, Jeep Renegades. Uh, just spending money like a drunken sailor. Uh, well, uh, you might be seeing some people putting videos up and stuff. Right now, especially in North Carolina, the weather is starting to break, uh, where we get ready to go from uh, summer and going into the fall. Uh, when that starts to happen, 
uh, uh, the machines because it's cooler. It's a little cooler at night, and the machines get a little a uh, little bit of a break at night. They don't have to work as hard. So uh, you got people who, who, especially it's a holiday weekend. People are not doing that many calls on the holiday. They actually going out. You got people who don't spent all the uh, uh, repair money on Jordans and uh, <laughs> and on uh, and uh, on, on school clothes and stuff like that, or paying college tuition. So right now, for the next couple of weeks, they more people are more concerned about getting the kids off to school and all that. That they're not going to be spending that much money. And then as soon as they get we get past this bump here in North Carolina, the state fair comes around, and people are then be going out to the fair, spending their money in the fair. They're spending their money going to the football games, you know, the uh, so college football games. They got a lot of stuff now that you got to share some money with. So the calls kind of slow up a little bit. They they don't dry up, but they just slow up. And if you listen to me and you follow that five banking account method, uh, you're okay. This is the time where you actually uh, you actually look forward to it because you actually start to relax and you actually go out and spend some time with your family. I saw some of you all going out to the beach, some of you all going out having vacation, just slowing down, enjoying life. But this is the time where you do that. But if you're somebody who overextends yourself or you're somebody who's not telling your money what to do and you just uh, your money is just getting spent out every uh, – Every every month, and you don't know where it's at. This is the time you start to panic. Well, uh, at the beginning of the summer, you remember he came in and uh, he he running had wanted to run some calls and stuff because uh, he was having some issues. Well, it's that time of year again. He he comes back the same thing. Uh, he's making over three thousand dollars a week, and uh, and he he he's totally he, he's in over his head in debt. And this is people who, who he talked about these credit cards and all this and that. Um, what what he was, what he done? He went out and uh, and 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 tried to play that credit game. You know what people tell you? Go get credit cards, and then from the credit cards, you actually now take the money and uh, other people time, other people money. Go get credit cards, get the money off the credit card. You spend that, and then when you start making your money, you go back and pay the credit cards off. Well, that's what he's. That's what he tried to do. He went out and um, got a bunch of credit cards to try to run his business off of and to catch up on, on stuff. So he took the credit cards and, uh, and uh, went out here and, and, and used that to actually feed his business. And what happened when he done that, he didn't ever fix the problem. The problem wasn't, wasn't a, the, the cash flow. The, you know, the problem wasn't he didn't have no credit. The problem was he doesn't know how to handle his finances. So now that the wheel got turned back on, uh, and, and like I say, uh, even though he's making the money, he, 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 don't, he don't have the cash flow to go back and pay the credit card and continues to try to live the same lifestyle that he's been living. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, now even though he got the money, he, he, didn't, he didn't change his, his, uh, his, uh, his financial problem now he don't even have the money to pay the credit cards back and he doesn't have the money to actually uh uh to uh to keep the business floating again because now he's going to use the credit cards up he's trying to figure out a way to get the business alive on top of that uh he's listening to folks and uh, people telling him that he, he wants to go out and buy another house and uh where well, he want to go out and buy a house uh next year so he's listening to people and people telling him um, you need to uh, you need to get your tax return set up to show that you making uh, he, he set them up to show that he was making eighty thousand dollars that he profited eighty thousand um, dollars in the process of him doing that showing that he profited uh, eighty thousand uh, dollars that triggered a tax bill for him so what happened if uh, if he if he, here he is uh, profiting eighty thousand dollars. Uh, eighty thousand. He's gonna be paying about uh, about twelve percent tax on that. Uh, excuse me. He's gonna be. Uh, let me get that straight. He gonna be, he, I think paying like fifteen percent tax on that on that eighty five that eighty thousand. So eighty thousand three point fifteen. Uh, that hit him with like a twelve thousand dollar tax fee. That's what. Uh, that's that's what he got. He got hit with. He got hit with a twelve thousand dollar tax bill. Um, you know, if you owe you owe the government, the government give you crazy penalties and crazy, 
crazy interest on that money that you owe them. The more you owe, the crazier it gets. So with that, um, he he owed the government um, uh, twelve thousand. But now because he's not able to service them, he's trying to pay them four hundred dollars a month. That ain't gonna cut it. You owe the government twelve thousand dollars. You're gonna be paying them four or five hundred dollars a week or every other day uh, to knock that thing down. Uh, his tax bill now has grown to seventeen thousand, and it's still growing. And now he's afraid. And so, um, what he came to me for, again, he won't listen. He will not listen. He comes to me and asking me, how does he get out of this uh, situation? And um, and I was telling him, you got to sell that boat. <laughs> you got to sell that Range Rover. You got to sell that Jeep Renegade. You, uh, he, he has a Toyota, uh, a new Toyota car for his wife. You got to sell that. You got to sell those four wheelers that you got for your kids. Uh, you're going to have to sell everything to get from out under that uh, the government. You don't want to owe Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam got a, a too, minute, too much power, and he has uh, he has uh, too uh, he, he he got too much control and too much power over your life to be on him. And he going he and, and the rate and the interest that he charges you is ridiculous. So if you you got to be pay, you got to get him out. So I said you got to sell uh uh you got you got to get from out, out under that thing. And and what he's trying to do. Uh, He's, he's asking me about selling Bitcoin, about buying Bitcoin. I was like, man, he, he want to take a thousand dollars and go buy some Bitcoin, because he think he could. He, he thinking if he would have bought Bitcoin, it would went up to eighteen hundred dollars, and he could have made money uh, with that. I'm, I'm telling him, stay away from the Bitcoin. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta, you gotta learn how to live on a budget. Uh, that's your problem. The problem is you, 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 you're not living on a budget. And so I was telling him, uh, he, he was wondering, I was telling him, you gotta get, uh, you gotta start separating these things and you wanna control everything, but you don't want nothing in your name. And, um, and he, he, I had told him this before, but he still didn't quite understand it because everybody else was telling him to do stuff in his name. And that's what got him into this trouble. Cause he's now trying to, he's trying to go buy a house in, in, in his name and get a mortgage. And I was telling him why you wanna do that. Uh, and, and that done generated a tax bill. It got him, got him in a bunch of trouble. Uh, so what I was telling him, uh, what I do, uh, let me, let me, uh, see if I can pull up, uh, uh, a paintbrush. So the problem is we don't want to, we don't want to have to work for, uh, wait and, and work for anything. Uh, we want it right now. And I, I, I understand that, uh, uh, I'm the same way. Uh, I, I would like I like to have everything right now and not have to work for it. But you gotta learn delayed gratification. Uh, you gotta get to a point where you're not you're not in uh, not, you're not in no rush. You know uh, when you start uh, you start being in a rush, that's gonna create folly, and you're gonna you're gonna cause yourself to get in, get get in some trouble. Uh, that's why now he 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 he's thinking about Bitcoin. Um, he wanna he want he want to do something that he thinks uh, he, he can put little effort into it and get some type of big payout up from it. And I'm telling him you're gonna you're gonna lose your money in that Bitcoin. Stay away from it. But he he's gone cold that he's gonna make some money off of Bitcoin that he he's willing to throw everything at it. So let me see if uh if I can find there we go. He's willing to throw everything that he has. At, uh, at Bitcoin instead of him actually fixing his problem. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to actually uh, uh, we're going to let me get this back. And we're going to well, that's the ice machine. That ice machine, I fixed the ice falling. It scared me every time it, it drops. I think somebody's breaking in here. All right. I'm gonna share this screen with you all, let you all see. So he, he this thing is, he wants to go get some daggone Bitcoin and try to uh, try to make things work for him, but it's not gonna it's not gonna help him. Uh, let's see here. Let me see how I make this thing a little bit bigger. Oh, here we go. Okay, all right. I'm gonna share the screen. 
and I will show you what I was actually telling him to do. All right, you all can see that. Okay, so um, this we we just gonna put here. Uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna uh, just say put his name as uh, uh, we're gonna say uh, J B. So that's and we're gonna put him as J B. So the way traditionally people tell us, uh, they tell us that, uh, to go get a W two. Uh, which is a job. So uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get your job, and we're gonna use just simple numbers. So when you go get your job, and we're just gonna say the job gonna pay him a hundred thousand dollars. So the job will pay him a hundred thousand uh, dollars. From that hundred thousand dollars, before he even get it. He's gonna. Uh, they're gonna take thirty uh, percent. So you're only gonna make seventy thousand dollars. So you only, that's all you bring home is that seventy thousand, right here. So now you go use your social security number. Uh, you're gonna go use your social security number. And this seventy thousand dollars from this W two that you get, or you uh, you get a statement from your job showing that you make seventy uh, hundred thousand or whatever, and your social security number, then the bank, then the bank can decide how much money they'll loan you. Uh, Cause they they'll look at this and they'll look at that, uh, they add them together and they'll come up with uh, a loan amount. And that's the simplest way, and the way we've been taught all our lives, how you go buy a house, how you buy anything, is is, uh, is, is through that right there. Now, the uh, the way I was telling him, I said, you want to buy a house, uh, you gonna it's gonna take you uh, it's gonna take you at least four to five years before you be able to buy a house, uh, because uh, the amount of money he's put he's making, he could actually save forty five or fifty thousand a year from his actual business. And from there, he can go out and buy a nice $200,000 house for cash that's not going to leave that much money to bring it up to par. Then he just take the next year after he purchased that house, put another 50000 in it to update it to bring it up to par, and he's totally debt free. So um, that, that's, that's, what, that, that's what I'm telling him. But he wants to know uh, how am I going to get the money to actually uh, pay for this? So what I was telling him, um, I know a lot of people don't like uh, don't like the Dave Ramsey plan. Um, they 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 think it they think it limits you um, in a credit society uh, now, um, but it, it actually gets you on uh, it actually it actually gets you uh, gets you to the point where you learn delayed gratification and you actually learn how to handle your money. You actually learn how to handle your money. And then from there, you're a little bit better with the credit if you ever decide to go back and use credit. So I told him what he got to do. He got to sell all his stuff, and um, all he all he's gonna worry about right now is uh is the mortgage. You gonna worry about his mortgage, utilities, and food. That's it. Um, he has a he has a truck uh, he has a truck that uh, a service van that's paid for. It's clear, free and clear. And his thing was he was going this 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 how he was thinking because he's just trying to get cash. He wanted to sell me his service van. <laughs> and if he wasn't my friend, I would have bought it. <laughs> he wanted to sell me. Uh, he, he he talked to me. He wanted me to buy his service van. Um, for a cheap price, he wanted to sell his service van to get cash to actually put towards his debt uh, because it's the first of the month to put towards his debt 
and to go buy, uh, uh, he was going to use his little Jeep Renegade to actually do service calls on. And I was telling him, why are you going to do that? You owe a payment on the Jeep. You don't owe nothing on your service van. It's free and clear. Uh, but I need some cash. Well, you need to sell that Jeep and get out from under, get out from under that Jeep and those car payments and stuff. So his thing is he doesn't want to do that. He wants to keep those toys. But you ain't got the money to keep those uh, keep uh, keep those toys. So you have to sell all that stuff. And what happened when you start to sell some of that stuff? Um, and I told him too with the credit card. He need to call them and tell them to uh, put those accounts on hold and take the scissors and cut them up tonight. Uh, every credit card, so his wife won't grab them, so he won't be tempted to grab them. Uh, go ahead, call the accounts, tell them to put them on hold and and cut them up. And then he want to list this. Uh, and uh, from here, uh, this is all that you're gonna be doing. You ain't going out to eat. And y'all ain't going on no vacation. Uh, that boat is gone. All those toys, that Range Rover, all that stuff is gone. And then you're gonna list it. You're gonna start off with your tax, because right now you gotta get those taxes off the way. Uh, you gotta get the tax, get your taxes, and then um, um, your your credit cards and bills that he owes. Uh, from the smallest to the to the largest they <laughs> owe, that's when he's gonna list them, and he's gonna start his debt snowball. And what he's gonna do after he after he makes sure the mortgage is paid. The lights and utilities and that includes his gas and all that stuff is paid, and they got food to eat. Every penny he got after that is gonna have to go right here towards the taxes. Then once he get the taxes, all the money that he got there is gonna come right here to the credit card, to the smallest, to the to the largest. He's gonna keep running them through. They pay all of them off. After he pays all of them off, uh, then he wants to go ahead and save his emergency fund. You want to have three to six months of living expenses saved up. So go ahead and get your three to six months of living expenses saved up. And then from there, he can then go and start doing um, the five bank account system again um, uh, with his business. He ain't never done the five banking account. Then he can go and start doing the five banking account. Right now, uh, he, he's, not able, he, he, he's, he's not able to do any of that. Right now, only thing he can pull off that five banking account is his 15% for his taxes. Everything else is going to go right here. He, he's in a, he's in a major he's in a major major uh, problem right now. He got to get himself out. And I've been there uh, with uh, my business where I've been at the point where he's at where I had to pay taxes. I didn't have no credit cards, but I had a bunch of vehicles. I went out and bought all these uh, new trucks. Um, at the time, I was doing installs for Lowe's, Sears, and Home Depot, uh, HH Greg, uh, Best Buy. We were doing all that, and I went out and bought all these new trucks. Uh, when the house, then so we were doing all these new construction houses, we were installing all the appliances, and all of a sudden, the housing bubble burst, and we weren't installing any more appliances, but I still had all these new trucks I had to pay for. So I actually had to do this. And so the same thing, he, 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 he's telling me, well, uh, I think... On one car, he was telling me he said he owed thirty on, on his uh, on his, this other thing too on the on the Toyota he owes like thirty some thousand on the car, um, and I was like okay he said well, how am I gonna sell it <laughs> I I don't have a uh, I don't have an actual title and I said what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to actually either do one or two things uh, you're gonna have to actually put some money to it to sweeten the deal so if the car is worth thirty thousand. You put it for sale. You put five thousand with it, and you watch them call. And you um you put it for sale for twenty five thousand. So if somebody see it, they say this is a brand new car. It's thirty thousand, but I can I can buy this one for twenty five, and uh because you're gonna put five thousand with it, and you just tell them, hey uh this is uh, you show them everything. Hey this is uh how much uh, money I owe on this car. Um I'm gonna uh, you you get you get me to uh you come here. And I'm gonna what you call. I'm gonna uh, get the payoff number, and I'm gonna let you go ahead and pay it off. And I'm gonna pay the five thousand, and then um, the title is gonna come. And I'm gonna sign a, a, a paper saying this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I owe this amount to this uh, to this financing agency. Uh, you pay this amount, I pay that amount, 
and we're going to get it notarized saying that when the title comes, I'm going to call you up and we're going to get the title notarized over to you. Let them take the car. Uh, I've done that on, on cars. Uh, matter of fact, I bought a, uh, I bought a Lexus like that where you, uh, uh, the guy owed a little bit of money left onto it. Uh, I, I called, I paid it off. And, uh, from there, when the title came, they just signed the title over to me. And so you take the car so they can't drive it or do nothing. Let them take the car. They, they got the car now. As soon as the title comes, you call them up and give him the title. They'll do that. If you ain't got the five thousand dollars to put with that, then you're gonna call the you're gonna put the car for sale, and you're you're gonna put a big cut on it. You're gonna say, hey, uh, the car's worth thirty thousand. I'm gonna sell it for fifteen or twenty thousand. You put it for sale for fifteen thousand. The people call you say, hey man, I wanna buy that car for fifteen thousand. You like you tell them the situation. I got the car. I'm not driving it. It's good. I can't afford to pay for it. What you, I gotta do if you're serious about it, um, I'm gonna call the financing company. And you're going to get what they call an offer in compromise, an offer in compromise. And what that means is you're going to call the financing company and tell them, I bought this car. I can't afford to pay for it. Eventually, you're going to have to come and get it. Uh, can uh, This person is going to give me 15000 cash for it. Can, uh, will you take this 15000 cash and, uh, and give them the title? But, uh, and, and, and release me from this and, and, and don't come after me for the difference. Uh, because you let them repossess it, they're going to sell it and whatever money. So if they sold it for 15, they're going to come and garnish your wages and sue you for 15,000. But if you do an offer and compromise, you can sell it for them. And they'll just say, just say, just don't come after me uh, for the 15,000. And what they'll do, they'll send you a 1099 at the end of the year for the 15,000 that they, they, they forgave you. And what you're going to do, that'll be just like you earning $15,000 money. Um, you run that through one of your business and, <laughs> and write yourself off so you don't have to pay no taxes on it, but they'll give you a 1099 so you'll have to pay taxes on that 15000 uh, that they gave. But they'll do that. I, I've done that for many of trucks that I had to sell, those new box trucks and stuff. And uh, they give you a 1099 and tell you don't bring yourself down there to their car lot no more looking for no new car. And you say, yes, sir, I ain't going to do it. And you get from under. So you, you do that. So you need to do that for that Land Rover. You need to do that for that boat. You need to do that for that uh, that new Toyota. You need to do that for that Jeep Renegade. Go buy your wife a beater car that she can uh, that you can pay cash for, and that she can get her from A to B for a year or so until you can get yourself straight. So that's how he get from up on all of that debt. And then I told him from then on what you want to do. You don't want to um you don't want to what you call it? you don't want to now put nothing else back in your name. Um. I, I don't own anything. And if you go up and you look, look up Mike Sneed, Mike Sneed don't own anything um, because none of it is in my name. But I control everything. And what I mean, what I was telling him about that, I was like, uh, so now uh, if you uh, uh, if you want to uh, if you want to if you want to if you want to you're gonna be paying cash for your cars and stuff now. So when you go pay cash for your cars, you can, you can have an LLC, you can, you can say JB, uh, JB Rentals. JB Rentals. And from there, you put your, uh, you put all your equipment, uh, you put your truck, you put your car, uh, you can, you can, if you, uh, if you, if you got equipment like, like backhoes and tractors, you put those there. And, and this is what I do. So, uh, this is, this is exactly what I do. If you go, uh, the, uh, the trucks and stuff that I, I just, uh, got and all that, all that stuff is, uh, I put it up on a, a different LLC. I don't put it under my name. So what happens? Now, uh, what you, what you got, you got these trucks right here. And now he, uh, and you got JB appliance repair.
so when he needs a service vehicle, so instead of him having to actually uh, uh, go out and actually, uh, if he don't have a service vehicle, if I, if I, if I, and the reason I started doing this, uh, uh, reason why I started doing this was because I, uh, I would go out and we were delivering appliances. And uh, I know when I got to the actual truck, dock, got to the truck place, they wanted you to actually sign up with Enterprise. And get a uh, get a, a rental to actually uh, to, uh, a big box truck and pay that rental fee every every week. It, it was like almost twelve hundred dollars those guys were paying to rent those box trucks, and um and, and they didn't own the box truck. And I was like, y'all paying that much rent, and they thought uh, to rent it, and 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 they thought it was okay because uh, they didn't have to worry about the truck broke down and just. I was like, well, God knows for fifty. <laughs> Fifteen hundred dollars a week. I I fix the truck. I I rent you mine, and that's exactly what I started doing. I started going out and I would buy those box trucks, and I would use them. And what I would do, uh, I would come. I let uh, JB Appliance pay JB Rentals uh, to rent the truck. So if I need a a box truck, I I would actually take it and whatever Enterprise was charging, I was charging myself the same thing uh, for that. So now, even though the, uh, uh, when I go out and I get, um, when I get that, uh, when I get that, what's it called? I get that, uh, uh, I, I get that 1099, say for instance, I get the 1099 uh, from Sears. Sears will give me a 1099 at the end of the year. Uh, that, that 1099 would say, uh, Say they paid me eighty thousand uh, dollars for uh, for doing their deliveries. So uh, when I got that eighty thousand dollars from them, I could actually then deduct. I could actually then deduct thirty thousand. I could actually deduct thirty thousand uh, right off the top. Because I had paid thirty thousand for rental, <laughs> so now uh, uh, JB Appliance is going to cut their taxable rate down by thirty thousand dollars. All they done what we call right pocket, left pocket, took the money out the left pocket and just put it in the right pocket. But now you don't actually uh, knock that money down, that thirty thousand that, that you have had over here. And so, uh, so now with that, when it gets over here, that uh, now you got. Uh, you got you got the thirty thousand, and this is the other thing too. <laughs> I have to be careful with this one right here. This is the other thing too. When you start um, when you start dealing with uh, companies, uh, we start dealing with companies. Uh, I don't have to have uh, I don't have to actually uh, give them a ten a ten ninety nine. And what I mean by that, like if somebody uh uh somebody actually uh does my uh they don't have to give me a 1099 what i mean by that uh if somebody comes and does my roofing for, uh, for me let, let me take that back yeah if somebody comes and does my roofing or something like that for me uh, if if uh, if um if i actually go through a company that's licensed like uh if i go through abc roofing um and i say i pay Thirty thousand, sixty thousand dollars to get my roof fixed. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't have to actually have to have a ten ninety nine uh, or a receipt, and, and for that matter, to actually show it. I can just say, hey, I made that amount of money, and the government will say, okay, that was a legit cus cus uh, legit uh, uh, company that he paid it for, and they they look at it and say, oh, that looks about right, <laughs> and they'll let it go. And so, I, I, it, it actually, it, it, anyway, some people can, can actually put some numbers that way, and you can start knocking that stuff down because you're actually going to a legitimate co company, and uh, it actually can knock some of those numbers down. Um, uh, you know, but you, you definitely want to make sure whatever you're doing is right. So I'll put that in there. But you can actually start knocking some of those numbers down. So I can actually then start uh, knocking my actual, uh, uh, knocking my actual, uh, 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 taxable income down uh, from there because uh, I'm renting from my own self and uh, the money the money is going going uh, going all the way over there 
And so then I say, what happens? Uh, what happens then when I uh, when I get to a point, I'm buying all this e equipment and stuff and setting it over here. I'm buying all this equipment. Uh, I got uh, I got cars. I I got just about anything, uh, tools, specialized, all my tools, all this stuff that anything that I would have to go to Ram rent and rent, it's setting over, it'll be setting over in JB Rental. So instead of, I used to go to a place called Ram rent and rent stuff. Uh, I, I now can rent it, all my stuff here. And so with that being said, uh, now if I ever wanted to go and actually buy something that, uh, that uh that I uh uh I'm actually going to go buy something where I was going to actually uh need to actually take a loan out. I go take this LLC, and what they want to see is they want to see is uh what's we call they're gonna want to see if uh if uh, uh all the stuff that all the all the collateral that I have here. So they'll look at all of that and they'll assign a number to it. They might even say, hey, what you have is worth $50,000 over here. So then they'll say, well, we'll, uh, we'll loan you maybe 70 or 80%. Uh, 70 or 80%. Uh, of that. So yeah, so uh, uh, that that that's what they do, and, and that's how you actually can go out and, and get loans from there. Like if if you go buy houses, uh, JB, you say JB, uh, real estate investment holding, and he start buying uh, houses out of here. Off one two. Three, four, no, uh, five. No, he start buying houses. The same thing. When they go there, they are gonna say, "Hey, uh, let's let's look and see what all this stuff right here is worth." And what all this stuff right here is worth, they might come up with uh, three hundred thousand. And they say from there, okay. Uh, we'll loan you 80, 70 to 80 uh, percent of uh, of what this thing right here is, is, is worth. They, they say we'll loan you 70 uh, to 80 percent of what it's worth. And then you watch for call. You uh you get the money and you go out and then and 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 get start building it. But you're not putting your personal name up in here. Your personal name is not going nowhere in it. And what you have done. Uh, how you get to the point where you can buy these things, how you can pay cash for these things, you do that through your appliance business. That's a step where most people leave out uh, when they start telling us this type of stuff. You you need to buy stuff in your business name. You need to do this and that. But you gotta have some assets and stuff in there first, or else you're gonna be uh, signing what they call uh, you be signing uh, 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 ah what is it called uh, uh, you be signing your name uh, ah I can't think of a name right now Jesus Christ uh, God knows it you got a sign saying you're gonna take responsi uh, responsibility for it um, uh, pretty much putting your name you co-signing for the business. And you, you really is in your name, just like if you co-sign up for somebody for a car. I can't think of the actual term right now, but they're gonna make you do that. Um, uh, uh, uh. No, it's not promissory note. Uh, eh. Eh, what is it called when you sign, when you uh, when you put your name out there for uh, for your business? Uh, oh. They make you do it sometimes with accounts when you get ready to. Uh, when you get ready to uh, say like uh, 
uh, if you if you want to open up a a, a charge account and that, that uh, they'll say okay if, if the business can't pay then you will pay. I, I, the name will come up with two, two minutes a little bit, but I can't think right now. They'll make you sign that for the business. But if you actually got uh, you actually got some collateral, that's where you actually fund that at. And how you get the collateral through your appliance repair business. This business right here that you all are getting in the appliance repair, it kicks off enough cash. Personal guarantee. There you go. There you go. There you go. Personal guarantee. That's the name of it. They, uh, they can make you sign a PG saying that you're going to personally guarantee that uh, that, that thing is going to uh, that you, you're going to get paid. That's putting you on the hook. But if you want to call, you got this collateral like uh, like this right here, that collateral stands for it. And they saying, okay, if you don't pay, we're going to come right. We're going to come and we're going to clean the board <laughs> what you got and take this stuff. And so that's what they do. They look at this as collateral. Um, but how you get your collateral through your appliance repair business. How you gonna get that? You are gonna have to uh, what's them call? Uh, uh, put your head down and go to work. That uh, uh, that that's what uh, he he was asking me. Uh, I, I uh, he was asking me. You know, he he wanted to put a uh, put some. How can he turn uh, uh, some a thousand dollars? He had a thousand dollars. He wanted to put up and thought he could turn it into two thousand real quick. And I was telling him, I don't know how you could uh, turn that thousand into two real fast but i definitely know how you can take that 40 take 40 dollars and turn it into 500 or a thousand dollars he was like how i said take that 40 dollars go put some gas in that van and get your ass out there and go run some service calls tomorrow <laughs> then you can take that 40 dollars that you just put into that gas in that van and you can turn that into four uh four uh 400 to a thousand dollars and you're gonna have to do that every day you're gonna have to do it every day put your head down and go to work and stop trying to do all this, all this funny financing and all this stuff where you don't, you think you're not gonna have to put no money in and no sweat in, and you're not gonna have to be responsible to actually uh, get this stuff done. You're gonna have to do it, and you're gonna you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to work. And I tell you, once you start, once you get all of those, because that's for everything he kept, he kept going back to. What about my credit? What about my credit? Credit is what trying to play that credit game has got you where you at right now. That's what got. Uh, you, you know, got you to where you at right now to the point where he hasn't even been in a, he hasn't even had a social security number in america for three years yet and you already done got caught up into uh into this credit thing living paycheck to paycheck you know uh, you you, you, uh, you you don't do this you know you you can't he, he, he fought his way to get from a communist country to get over here to get hooked up <laughs> into this credit card game living paycheck to paycheck i told him i said the rate you going if you get caught up and messed up with this uh, the tax man, you be trying to get back over there into the communist country. You be trying to sneak your way back over there into that communist country. If you mess around and get caught up on the wrong side of the IRS, they'll make it so they they they'll kill you while you're alive. They 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 would drain you. And that's what he was telling me. He said he can't sleep. The people calling him every day. He don't as soon as the money comes, he don't have a plan, and he just looking and scratching trying to get anything taken care of. And he said, I know I'm terrible with money. Yeah, you are. Um, but the thing of it is, you're going you're gonna to have to learn this stuff. And so have, you know, the, the great thing about it, uh, I know that his appliance repair business will get him out of it because it got me out of it. And um, I, I, I'm pretty much similar to where he is with a couple of zeros on it. And my appliance repair business got me out of it. But um, it had to get to the point where um, I actually had to, I had to grow up. And uh and 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 had to had to had to had to sell those new cars. Had to had to had to go out there and uh had to had to drive an old uh, old beat up van. That's why I started going to the state surplus. I ain't never stopped. I started going to the state surplus buying those uh, used cars. And you see me buy them, spray paint them, fix them up, make them look nice, <laughs> and go. Because then I realized once I start buying those used cars and those used vans. Uh, they, I, the, uh, I, I would happen to, I would happen to change the brake pads and fuel pumps on those new trucks and new cars just as quick as I was on those used ones. And then I, I have, a, I go pay thirty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars for a brand new service van. Uh, I go up there to the, uh, I, I, front, I hadn't even seen the van. I go up there to the warehouse. I see the new van. It got scratched all the way down the side. What happened? I back into so and so. God knows, man. We didn't even put the wraps on it. You already messed it up. Now these old vans and trucks I buy, um, 
they scratch them. Well, who cares? <laughs> Wrap it up. Let's go and get out there and let's make some money on that thing. It didn't hurt as bad. It didn't hurt as bad. And same thing. When you get here and you, it don't take long. Uh, these, those those little those little uh, three thousand dollar houses and stuff that I bought. It didn't take them long, four or five years, for them to actually turn to fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollar house. It didn't take them long for them to actually do it and uh, and go. It didn't take them long for me to have three, four, five, six pieces of property paid for. It, and and, um, and that's the, that's the thing too. Uh, I, I was talking to somebody earlier today. I was like, you know, that little ice cream parlor I'm putting over there in Rocky Mountain. That's mine to, for me to for me to, to mess up. <laughs> I mean it. Uh, the money that's coming, I, 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 you know, last years and stuff, I don't pay for kids to go to college. I don't pay for uh, houses, pay for cars, paid all the bills, everything to secure my family. That little ice cream pile stand I'm putting out there is for me to get money and for me to mess it up the way I want to. <laughs> that's going to be for me. Whatever comes off of that is what I'm going to use to actually enjoy it. That's going to be when I'm going to go buy my toys and stuff with next year. Uh, that little ice cream stand coming off there, that's going to be what I'm going to go and actually uh, uh, and, and get out here and have some fun with. Reasonable fun, but that's going to be when I have some fun with. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and pull cash off of that. It don't take long for you to get there. And then once you, once you get to that point where you have all these other assets that's paying you money, you know, like he could, he could have, uh, now he got that. He got JB. Uh, he has JB ice cream. Uh, so what you do with all the uh, ice cream uh, equipment and stuff? All that belongs to who? <laughs> uh, all your ice cream equipment belongs to JB Rentals. So what you do, they rent the equipment from him every month. And what do you do from there? Uh, you, you get on a maintenance plan, just like if, uh, just like if I was buying it um, from uh, Emory Thompson directly, or if I was buying it from Turnkey Ice Cream, you get on a maintenance plan. And I got to go out there and I got to uh, clean the, uh, take the cover off and clean out the coils and the drains and all that stuff. Old fashioned ice cream, you got to pay that for them to do that. So yeah, that, that's that's how you do it. That, that, all the, and, uh, and right here, JB don't own anything. JB don't own anything. So what happened when JB uh, something was to happen to JB and and he he gets he uh he find out he got to go on dialysis uh, later in his years. The state's gonna come in and say, uh, what do you own, JB? I don't own anything. They're gonna look up on the JB name. They don't see he, he don't own anything. The state don't care. The federal government, when you start getting Social Security and help, they look at they look at your earned income. They look at earned income, how much money you earn. You can only earn so much money uh, before they uh, they they stop helping you or they start cutting your benefits. They look at earned income, passive income. Uh, this money that's coming in from here is all passive. A portfolio income, you can make as much money that way if you want, and the government ain't gonna bother you. <laughs> they don't care how much money you make passive or from portfolio. It's the earned income. So they're gonna look at me and they're gonna say, How much what you got, JB? I don't have anything. Well, he can't afford to pay for dialysis. Put him on dialysis. <laughs> and they'll pay for me to go on dialysis. When uh they go there and uh unfortunately, you know, uh, uh if you have to go to a rest home, rest homes can get real expensive. Um, I advise you at, at about 55, which I got to start looking at, you start looking at long-term care insurance and get away from the life insurance. But uh, uh, if, if that happens, um, if you don't have no long-term care insurance and you have to go into the uh, state rest home or whatever, and you don't, you don't crack and scramble. If I had all this stuff up under my name, if I, if I went into a rest home, um, the rest home will provide me services. But when I die, they're gonna say your debts gotta stay, uh, your uh, your assets gotta stay for your debts. Meaning, when I die, the rest home gonna say, well, you know, uh, JB owed us a half a million dollars for taking care of him, wiping his butt while he was in here. He didn't have no money. What assets do he own? When well, they say, well, he died, he owned half of these, uh, 
He owned half of everything in, in, in these cars, all of these houses, the ice cream parlor and stuff. So what they're going to do, they're going to say, give us JB half right now. Uh, they're going to go to my wife or uh, uh, whoever and say, give me, give me JB half. I ain't got it. Well, you got to sell it and give me JB, <laughs> JB half. They forced them to sell it so they can get that half. And they wouldn't be able to pass down to my kids. Um, so with this, when JB dies, they said, JB didn't own anything. What about those cars that he was driving around? He was renting those. That's from JB Rental. What about uh, uh, the uh, ice cream parlor? He didn't own that. That's owned by JB Ice Cream. What about those houses? He don't own that. Uh, JB RH owned that. He don't own anything. What can we get? Can't get nothing. Write it off. <laughs> So they'll write it off on a uh, uh, bad debt, and they'll get that back from the government. But that's what you, that's what you do, and so you you control all of it. JB controls all of this, but he don't own any of them. And so that's the stuff that I was trying to uh, teach him how to do. That's the stuff that we have to uh, we have to start doing, where we actually learning how to play this game and being able to take stuff and pass it down to the next generation. All right, I'm gonna read some of the stuff we got going on in the chat. And uh, and then I'm gonna get out of here, <laughs> okay? Uh, BK from the Rockies said, "What's up, ABC fam? Hey, what's happening?" And you can see, uh, I, 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 uh, all this. Not tell you I, that's what I was doing. Uh, that's what I was doing. You can see it all on the uh, board. I, uh, actually, I've raised some of his names and stuff. But that's actually what I, I was uh, actually showing him how to do. And that's what uh, he, he's actually doing. That's that's real life. That's real life stuff that I actually talk to talk to them about. Uh, BK from the Rockies said, "What's up, family? Hey, what's going on?" Uh, Frank Evans, y'all hit the like, hit that button. Yeah, please do. Uh, BK from the Rockies, the government won't play no games. They reoccurring tax bill will grow with fees and interest until it's paid. He is really he really needs a private loan to take it out in my opinion. Yeah, he, he uh, if he could get a private loan right now, all his, he, he just so I don't doubt if anybody would give him any other money. Because he, he just he, anywhere he could have got money, he done got it. He's gonna have to buckle down and get it paid off. He can he make enough money where he can actually pay it off. And the other thing too that because he's doing this, it's making him now uh, just chase money. Uh, we had that discussion too earlier today. Uh, you gotta stop chasing this money, man. Uh, what you mean? I mean you 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 overbooking your calls and you're uh, and you're 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 taking on calls and stuff that he's not ready to do. Just trying to get money, like uh, like he, the uh, the ice machine that he has here. He took that. It's an easy easy fix, but because he's overbooked and all that, he what's the call? Uh, he uh, he 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 he's he going to the house, picking up appliances and bringing them in here and fixing them at night and then to, and then taking them back because they don't have time to go to the house and fix them. So he go fix them, bring them here, uh, come here at night, fix them, and then he will take them back to the house. Uh, I said, you can't do that. Well, I, I don't want to be in the house at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, but I don't want you to be here at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. He come in, fix them, then, then, then try to take them back to people's houses. So he's just overbooked, and he's just, he just running, running, running calls that he's not going to be able to do anything right. So we had that discussion, too. you got to slow down, and you got to get – now that he has a game plan, well, we, we wrote out him a game plan. Now that he got a game plan, he felt better now. Uh, so when uh, when people call and those bill collectors call, you can just tell, hey, I'm sending you this amount of money, and from uh, and this is what you're gonna get, and he feel better at it because now he can tell them the truth. This is when you're gonna send you your money. Right now they're gonna pay you the bare minimal. Up until then, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm gonna start paying you off. Uh, yeah, what's up, DCNF? Um, Frank Evans, cash is king, the way I see it always been. Um, Mr. McKenna, McKenna, what's good, Mike? What's happening? Yeah, that's what, uh, some people say cash is king, ca uh, credit is emperor. I don't know. I, I Credit didn't work well with me. It didn't work well with me. Uh, don't, yeah, do not play with Uncle Sam. Do not. Lord knows do not play with him. Uh, BK from Rocky. Lord knows I hope that he's not taking care of a big family. If he is, it's going to take him long. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, he, he got blended family. He has his son, then he has his wife, and her, her, then she has a daughter and a son, and uh, yeah, and a mother that he, he has here. So yeah, he he dug himself deep. He 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 deep in the hole. Yep, the borrower is slave to the lender always. 
Yeah, he said no, all that with credit. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, he said no. Uh, and you look at it, he's a brand new Range Rover. Like he, he said, he, 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 and then the thing about it, um, he, he had a new Mustang, and he uh, he he needed something. Uh, he, he needed something to actually pull the boat. The the Renegade couldn't pull the boat, so that's why he went and got the uh, got the new Range Rover. And he rode. <laughs> he, he was negative upside down in the actual Mustang. And in order to get the Range Rover, he had to get a he had to get a more expensive car. So they, they could justify him rolling that rolling that Mustang. It, it's just crazy, <laughs> just crazy, just crazy. He rolled he rolled the negative equity of that Mustang over into that uh, over into that. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, uh, solid stuff to wealth to go. Yeah, what's going on? Thanks, thanks, Miss Ward. Thanks, Miss Ward. And like I said, if if you watching, man, uh, we we had this discussion, and it's not to pick or anything. I was in the same boat. I was in the same boat not that long ago. And that's why I told him. I said I was in the same boat, and I, I said I buy houses every all the time. I buy houses and land all the time, uh, but I don't buy with no credit. And I said it, it, uh, it, it takes me a little longer to get them up and running, but uh, I get them up and running. And and once I finish with them, they look pretty decent. Uh, decent enough for flying for fair. Real game provided. Get my notepad. Out. <laughs> thanks, please. Thanks, uh, Johnny A. What's good, Uncle Mike? Hey, what's going on, Johnny A. Uh, answer that, Roy. What's up, Mike and guests? Hey, how you doing? Uh, Johnny A, I got a question for you. What's the benefit of having a separate office for your business? Um, which, uh, would you say things get better once you stop operate, operating out of your house and got a legit office? Um, I don't think so. If you're somebody who you don't have any peace at your house and, and, you, and your wife is giving you a lot of honeydews and this and that, uh, then you might need to have a separate place so you can go you can concentrate on your business. Um, with me, I still have an office upstairs, and that's where my day starts off at. Uh, I like it like that. I can just crawl crawl out of bed and, and, and walk upstairs and uh, and look at everything about 5 in the morning. And I don't usually get down here to this office uh, until probably about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Um, I like having that office uh, um, in my in my house. Now, some of the, the, the negative about it, sometimes you – you got to be willing to know when to cut it off, too. If you got an office in your house, sometimes you don't know when to cut it off. Uh, that was one of the problems I had early early on. Uh, I felt like if I'm sitting there, I could be doing some work, and I didn't know how to cut it off and have time with my family. Uh, so um, if, you, if you, have, you have a hard time with the boundaries, uh, that that can be a problem. Um, then it goes uh, if, uh, like, like it goes then where you, you have to meet clients. When it got to a point where you had to start meeting clients, uh, I, you might not want them coming to your actual personal house. So then, uh, but then, you know, places like Starbucks and all that stuff came along to meet there, and uh, and coffee houses. Uh, so you had to have a place to actually meet somebody. Um, I personally like it down here. I can come here, and all my stuff for my business and everything is right here. Uh, everything that I need, and I can just leave business here and, and go home. Um, you know. Uh, no, you, you you can write off if you got it at your house. You can still write off uh, square footage of your house for your business. So you still you still get write offs. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, do you still need to carry insurance for your business if you rent vehicles? It all depends. It all depends. Um, for uh, for for instance, if uh, when I was doing uh, when I was doing the the delivery thing. Uh, they made me have this uh, special, I forget the type of insurance it was, but it actually protected, I had to have a special insurance that protected the goods that were inside of the actual uh, vehicle. Uh, so I had to have that. Uh, same thing with the ice cream parlor for my actual trailer and stuff like that. Um, because I actually, have, I actually have the names on my vehicle. That's the other thing too. If you put your name on it, then they're going to, uh, that's when you, when you tell them that you actually rent a vehicle or you, uh, you actually, uh, uh, you got it from someplace else, they're going to ask you, do you have your name on it? If you have your name on it, then they're going to make you get a ghost policy. So that's the same thing with, uh, with me with my, uh, ice cream policy. Because with the trailers and stuff, I rent that to the ice cream policy. Um, they, uh, they want to know, do they have an the ice cream policy name on it? Yes, it does. But well, now we need to know who's going to be driving that, uh, 
driving that trailer because uh, I didn't put the name on the van. So you know the white van don't have the name on it. But the trailer does. They want to know well, who's going to be pulling it because uh, whoever uh, driving, whoever you put on this policy that's going to be driving responsible for going out there, we we'll, we'll write the right ice cream policy policy for that because if something happens, they get in the wreck and uh, and the trailer get uh, get get totaled. Uh, we we we're not going to we're not going to pay for it unless you have this policy. But because um, I want them to cover that trailer, because that trailer uh, could be worth about maybe twenty thousand um, dollars. They saying, okay, now that you have this policy, if you're out there and you get an accident and the trailer get total, um, we'll pay to get the um, get the trailer repaired. Yeah, that gonna be commercial. It's gonna be commercial auto. Yeah. Depending on if you have your name on it. Uh, DCNF, you get uh, you got to. Uh, you saw that happen to GC car rental business. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't know how he done his car rental business, but uh, yeah, um, I think with GC with the car rental and the rental business, yeah. Now my rental business gotta have my uh, gotta have insurance on those cars and those trucks. You gotta have insurance on. Them. But I think what he was talking about, I think he was talking about does his appliance repair business or the ice cream parlor business still have to have insurance since we actually renting from somebody. But if you put your name on the side, yes, you are going to have to have insurance on it. And you're going to have to tell them who's going to be the ones driving. And they network it. Uh, okay. Uh, not promising note. Yeah, the person guaranteed that was the note that you have to sign for. Uh, ben Nash. Uh, dropping gems. Thanks, uh, that, that dynamic man. Thanks, man. Uh, DCNF 52 people watching. Yeah, hit the like button if you like. Um, guarantee. Uh, uh, thanks, Slick. Slick say, uh, this information is golden. Thanks. Um, Untamed K goes. That's the thing, Mike. Employees won't care a vehicle like you do because it's not. Yeah, it don't. Uh, cause I, I used to, I used to, I remember I would go and, um, and I would, what you call? Uh, I, I I used to try to depend on the subs and stuff to tell me when they needed new brakes and when something was wrong with the vehicles and stuff. But I go there and the, uh, and uh, they tell me I can't drive today. Why not? Uh, brakes ain't working. You go there, the rotor, the, the whole rotor be gone. How long do they have problems? Uh, I heard it by saying that. So now they, they'll just wait till it just turn off, turn all the HELL. So what I start doing, regardless if it needed or not. Uh, every two months, you gotta change the rotors. You gotta get the oil changed. And um, I just started uh, uh, just showing up on Saturday mornings. Um, I'll just tell them um, I, uh, Saturday morning. Um, you hear somebody outside? It'd be me at your house. Uh, I'm gonna be changing the rotors and changing <laughs> and changing the oil. So I started just doing that, uh, going out changing the brake pads, regardless if it needed or not. And that was, that's what I've done a lot. And um, until uh, until I uh, actually started using uh, Crossroads, uh, I found uh, found a, a, a good a good mechanic shop. He still do all my stuff. Crossroads, uh, Crossway. I keep saying Crossroads. Crossway over in Benson. They do all of my repairs. Um, I started just taking them. Hey, uh, they they just had me on a schedule. I come through and uh, I I take stuff over there to fix it. Um, uh, Naya Rada L. Peace, ABC fam. Hey, how you doing? Tyran TV, what's up, Mike and ABC fam? What's up, man? I saw you out there at the beach enjoying time with your family. That's great stuff. Uh, Mike, how do you manage owning uh, multiple vehicles? Uh, it's, it's, the, the, the problem I have with my vehicles is the fact that I have somewhere to keep them at. <laughs> uh, 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 the problem is, is trying to find somewhere to put them at. Because, like, uh, like for instance, uh, I have vehicles outside right now. I got vehicles everywhere, <laughs> and uh, and I got them at uh, properties that I'm renovating. I got them outside of the ice cream parlor. I got them at my house. Uh, I, I used to have them at my mom's house. Uh, I got them at, at at the subs' houses. I want them to take the vehicles home because I don't have nowhere to keep them at. And so now my problem is finding some place to keep vehicles. So I, I usually do this right here, like like uh, uh, like the new truck that I, uh, uh, the flatbed truck that I I, I got. Um, 
I actually uh, went around to the different um, store owners first. And I said, people who I know that's doing a lot of hauling and stuff, I tell them, say, hey, uh, I see you, you hauling uh, you, you, you hauling stuff um, on your new truck. Yeah. Uh, that's too, I have to tell them this. I said, that's too nice of a truck for you to be hauling stuff on it. Uh, I said, uh, could you use a flatbed? Yeah. Uh, I got one I'm not using. Um, I'll bring it over here and I'll just park it right here and I'll give you a key. You can use it anytime you want to. Just leave it parked here. Okay. So I'll do that. I'll leave it. I'll leave it at one of uh, storefront and they can use it. I don't care if they drive it. They can use it, but I have it nearby when I need it. Um, so uh, I went there. None of the storefronts needed a flatbed, but I went to my father-in-law this weekend and I hit him with that because uh, he uh, uh, he used to uh, he, he still house trash and all that stuff off. And, uh, uh, and he used to use it for his cattle and all that stuff. And uh, uh, he had an old, uh, what we call, uh, one of a rollback for a straight back truck uh, to hold cars on. And that's what he used to actually take hay out to the cows and use to take trash and all that stuff off. So uh, I, I, this this uh, weekend when we was out there, I was like, uh, hey, could you use a straight back, uh, flat back truck? He was like, yeah, I've been looking for one. I got one. Uh, um, I'm not doing anything with it. I, I'll bring it up here. You, uh, um, you can have it. I'll I just have it up here. Well, man, I, I appreciate that. When are you going to bring it? I'll bring it up there like Wednesday, Thursday. So now I got a home. So I bring, I take, I'm going to fix it up, paint it, take it up there. I leave it at my father in law house, give him a key. He can drive it whenever he wants to and stuff. And then I'll watch him call. Whenever I need it, I'll just go down there and get it and bring it up here. I got a place to keep it. Um, but eventually, I'm looking for some um, land. If I can find me some vacant land, um, I'm just going to build me uh, a nice little garage to keep my toys. And then I eventually bring all my toys back into one location. But the hardest part is actually finding some place to keep everything. And if I had a location, I would actually get me a forklift. Because right now, this is this is about the third time I done needed a forklift. And usually, if I need something two or three times, i go ahead and I'll get me one. And I, I can see a lot of a uh, lot of stuff now that I'll be using a forklift for. So um, uh, I will actually find me a forklift. Uh, Ma, Mike, you are losing me. I'm sure you have important information. The stop and moments of silence and phone going off is too much construction. Please put your phone on vibrate. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, uh, um, Mark Evans. Uh, what about insurance for me, personal, uh, through my business? I'm 100% through the VA. Uh, you're talking about medical insurance. If you talk about medical insurance, um, you can actually buy that directly. You join um, our trade organization, USA. Uh, go ahead and what's your call and uh, sign up with and join a trade organization, and you can buy insurance from them. Um, I was buying insurance from them at, uh, for a while uh, for my family. Um, my uh, a family of five, and uh, uh, that was for full coverage and everything. It was about eight hundred dollars a month that I was paying. Now, said already, Mike is correct on the rental vehicles. Okay, uh, Mr. O, that's my issue, Mike. If I start getting texts, I have nowhere to put them, and my city charges a thousand a year for parking pass to park in their lots, and I think it's a lump sum each year. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. If you what we call, if you uh, get this, uh, get subs, let the subs take them home. Uh, that's what I do. I let the subs take them home and let them uh, let them go out there. I didn't care if they drove drove it or not, because like I was paying like two thousand dollars for a van, and uh, I don't care if they drove it. It's free advertising. Uh, let them go. Now they want them. I was telling somebody earlier. I didn't want them taking them and doing nothing crazy. You know, I remember one time I got a, a, a red light ticket from a sub. It was um, out in, and, and um, out past Richmond, Virginia. He took my service vehicle, took the family to uh, to King's Dominion. <laughs> so I don't want them to do that. But if they go around doing service calls or, or driving it on the weekends to to run errands and stuff, I don't care. I don't care about that. Because they're giving me more. Uh, they're giving me more advertising. Uh, Patrick Young, what's good, Mike? How you going, Pat? Uh, uh, Mr. O, I was thinking about going to store units and seeing if uh, they rent parking or something. Massachusetts sucks, Mike. 
if I knew I was going to be doing as well as I am, I would have started another state. Yeah, that's what I tell a lot of people. Find a state you want and go there. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Maurice Litton. Is there any advantage of taking the appliances out of the house and doing a repair in a different location? It is a huge hassle. So ain't, no, ain't no work at all. But all it does is buys us some time with the customer. Uh, because he done told the customer, I'm coming to fix it, I'm coming to fix it. And he don't have time. So what he does, he can go there, pick it up, bring it here. And so now he's out running service calls. So he'll come back tonight. He, he came here just left. So he was out here tonight until 8 o'clock fixing the ice machine. So that noise you're hearing, that vibrating, that what people thought was the phone, that's an ice machine dropping ice and all that stuff. So uh, he came here, fixed it, and he'll let it sit here and run overnight and make sure it don't have any problems. So in the morning, he'll come back and take it to the customer and just drop it off. So it, it, that's all it is. It, it's a hassle. It ain't no it ain't no fun in it at all. 63 Impala Rag, dude, what up, Mike and ABC fam? Hey, how you doing? Uh, Thompson Applause, hey, y'all. Uh, how you doing? Um, so it's now 9-11. I want to thank everybody for joining in. Um, like I say, if you want to know more about stuff like this, this is in the appliance boot camp, how you actually start your own appliance repair business. I tell you how I actually uh, take the money from our appliance repair business, go out and start other business, how I can pay cash for property, pay cash for uh, for these uh, uh, cars and little vehicles and stuff like that. You know, um, I, I'm not out here buying cash, you know, no Lamborghinis or none of that stuff. But uh, I do uh, I, I, I do go out and uh, I, I buy cars that have been nice to me and I enjoy it and pay cash for them. And uh, I don't have to be up at night worried that the, uh, that my um, my friend right now is worried about. I can I, I, I go to bed and sleep good tonight. I'm happy. Uh, matter of fact, I was looking. I thought I might have had the, the titles. <laughs> I got the two titles to the two cars I just purchased. I went to the DMV earlier today and got them, and so, so I, I feel good. I, I'm not, I'm not up at night worried about uh, how I'm gonna uh, pay. You. What, what was he paying? Uh, uh, six. He got six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars he paid for a Toyota per month. Uh, uh, let's see, six hundred dollars for a Toyota. Almost eight hundred dollars he paying for a Jeep Renegade. That's a little truck Jeep, and about twelve. Twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars he paying for a uh, Range Rover. <laughs> so you no, know, I don't have that to worry about. Uh, and, and then uh, um, I think I think his his mortgage he told me right now is nineteen hundred dollars, and and then all the credit card bills he he have, and then the tax man, you know, and and he you knows, and the tax man he coming, he coming, he gonna get his, he gonna get his. And so, and, um, and just having all those people, he said, he don't, he, like he said, how do they get my phone numbers? They just keep calling him all the time, worrying him about payments. So I don't have that to worry about. <laughs> I'm good. I'm going home and sleep like a baby. So once again, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you hadn't already, click the link in the description. You can buy the um, you can buy the appliance boot camp. And let me teach you how to start your own appliance repair business. Not only do I teach you the business side, I teach you how to actually repair the appliance. Everything you need to know to start your own appliance repair business is right there in the course. Once again, thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you later.